What are the neurotransmitters involved in falling asleep and staying asleep? And why do so many people struggle? Today's episode is gonna dive into that and so much more, so stay tuned. Welcome back to the Sarah Kleiner Wellness YouTube channel. Today, I have Dr. Scott Scher back on the podcast to talk all about these neurotransmitters that are involved in falling asleep and staying asleep and why so many people struggle in this area. Now, I do wanna let you know that I will always recommend people get the lifestyle piece down before adding any sorts of supplements into their regimen. So please make sure that you're getting my free guides, especially that free guide to building your perfect quantum day. That is linked in the show notes, or you can go to my website, www.sarahclinerwellness.com and go under all free resources. And there is a free 13 page ebook there that you can download to give you those foundational steps for the lifestyle things you need to do to get your sleep in a good place. But if you've done that and you've been doing that for a really long time and you're still struggling, then today's episode might be interesting and helpful to you. Now, Dr. Scott has been on the show before and we did an intensive talk about methylene blue. So I'll link that in the show notes. And if there's anything we talk about in today's episode that you wanna check out and try for yourself, you can always use the code Sarah over at Troscriptions, which is Dr. Scott's company. So I hope you enjoyed today's episode. And before we jump into it, I do want to thank a couple of sponsors. The first one is going to be Viva Rays. Now they are my go-to source for protecting my sleep and my circadian rhythms. You can use my code Yogi to save over at Viva Rays. And they have fantastic circadian glasses as well as eye masks, earplugs, and low EMF headphones. So check them out. And thank you to Upgraded Formulas. I love their magnesium formula. When it comes to falling asleep, staying asleep, it is fantastic. You can use my code YOGI12 or YOGI to save there. They also have a fantastic hair tissue mineral analysis with a consultation to see if minerals are even an issue for you. They are for a lot of people and can cause sleep issues, all kinds of other issues. So check them out. Again, a link down in the show notes. I thank them both very much for sponsoring today's show. And speaking of which, let's go ahead and jump on into it. Hello, everyone. Welcome back. I am excited to have Dr. Scott here with me today. Now, we did a previous episode on methylene blue. It's actually gotten quite a few listens. So I will make sure to post that in the show notes if you want to learn about methylene blue. But we are going to talk about GABA today. And I think it'll be an interesting conversation because this is a neurotransmitter that a lot of people don't talk about. So let's take it away. Yeah, thanks for having me back, Sarah. It's uh, it's really nice to, to see you again. Uh, in your lovely, on your lovely porch outside of Georgia, <laughs> where yes. I have sunlight coming through my windows, which is not as good. I know this, but I'll, but I'll take it for uh, a chilly Colorado morning here. So, <laughs> yeah. yeah, but yeah, so GAB has become kind of a new sensation for the transcriptions company that, uh, that I'm the chief operating officer for. But in, in essence, this goes back a long, longer time than that. I've been a clinician now for many years. Uh, it's longer than I can. I was actually thinking about this the other day. I've been out of training now for almost 15 years, actually pretty crazy. And wow. uh, being in clinical practice and seeing people, you know, one of the things that I always have found is that people have a really hard time with anxiety and sleep. It's mm -hmm. like, it's across the board. And I think it's just a problem societally, as we know, from mm -hmm. everything that we eat, from that what we consume, uh, from a media perspective, that mm -hmm. kind of consumption and the toxins in our environment and our relationships and, you know, everything across the board. And, and one thing that I've sort of now over the last several years realized is that there is this syndrome and it's a pretty interesting one called GABA deficiency syndrome. And mm -hmm. so for those who don't know, GABA is a neurotransmitter. It's your inhibitory neurotransmitter, which means it helps your brain stop or calm down the firing. So mm -hmm. we have this balance between our excitatory neurotransmitter called glutamate and GABA. And glutamate is actually converted into GABA in the brain. And about 80% of your neurotransmission is these two neurotransmitters. Everything the other ones get so much more press, your dopamine, your serotonin, your norepinephrine, all these get so much press and they're like your kind of sexy neurotransmitters because you get hurt, you hear about them all the time, but it's actually 80% of neurotransmission is, has nothing to do with those directly. It actually has to do with GABA itself and glutamate and the balance between these two neurotransmitters. Awesome. Yeah. And like I said, people don't really talk about these. So 
do people, a lot of people have issues, you think, with GABA and glutamate? Maybe we can talk about that a little bit. Yeah, yeah. So when it comes to the the main symptoms of GABA deficiency, um, from a mental health perspective, uh, those that have not enough GABA around have a higher propensity for anxiety, for fear, depression, short tempers, phobias, impulsiveness, disorganization, addictions. Um, it's even associated with schizophrenia and obsessive compulsive disorder. Mm. And systemically, it's associated with IBS and diarrhea, high blood pressure, chronic pain, migraines, allergies, frequent urination, flushing, sweating, salt cravings, muscle tension. I mean, a lot of different things. Okay. And so <clears throat> if you're listening, you probably have some of those things, hopefully mm -hmm. not all of them. And it's more pervasive than we realize. And I think that what it comes down to is that um, most of us are not doing a great job converting glutamate into GABA in the brain. And mm -hmm. this is for a lot of different reasons, but glutamate, again, being our excitatory neurotransmitter, um, it gets converted to GABA only in the brain. So GABA is only made in the brain. And so you can't you know, make it any other place. And so you have to have a good source of glutamate. And that's also uh, an amino acid called glutamine. So glutamine is an amino acid in many types of food, but it's mostly in your meat products and it's mm -hmm. and, and seafood, for example. You can get glutamine in other products, but glutamine is not that well, it's not that bioavailable and not as much in your plant-based proteins and of course, plants that are not protein-based. So you have to have a good source of glutamine, uh, which is the amino acid. And then the problem is if you have a gut that's leaky or that's not going well, um, your gut is going to suck up most of the glutamine that you are trying to intake because mm -hmm. glutamine is the, the major fuel, the primary fuel of your colon cells. So you could be deficient there. Um, and then if you are able to get enough glutamine in and you're getting, and you're going to convert it to glutamate, um, then glutamate gets converted to GABA, but it requires vitamin B6 and it requires magnesium. And many of us are B6 deficient. I would be one of those when I check my lab. So I always have to take B6, for example. And then many of us are also magnesium deficient. So it's very difficult to make that conversion. And also there's many things that kind of muck up the conversion from glutamate to GABA, um, including chronic stress. You know, chronic stress is going to deplete your GABA stores. If you have mm -hmm. inflammation in the system, that's going to make the enzyme that converts it not work very well. If you have low mineral levels, for example, that's also going to make that conversion worse. If you're, um, if, if you have, uh, if you have, uh, these, uh, if you have infection, that's another one. If you have infection, that's also something that can you know, then block the conversion from glutamate to GABA. And so you have this, um, this imbalance where you have too much of the excitatory neurotransmitter that makes you like ready to go and on, um, the most common feeling of too much glutamate for everybody listening is going to a Chinese restaurant and having monosodium glutamate mm. in your food or MSG. So MSG is kind of sweet. And as a result of that, it's used in some restaurants. And then if you've had a headache after MSG, or you haven't been able to sleep after mm. MSG, it's because you have this imbalance acutely of glutamate to GABA. Mm, okay. So do you, people just supplement with GABA? Is that what we're supposed to do? Will it help? Will it hurt? That's, sure. you know, because it's like so common, like, well, you're deficient in this, let's just supplement with it. And I find it's not always that simple. So let's yeah, no, you're, that. It, yeah. yeah, it's a great question. It's almost, it's a trick question and, and a good trick question for people <laughs> listening because um, the idea here is of course, we need help right away in a lot of a lot of times, right? So if people are in a pinch, if they're on this freight train that just can't stop, they're not sleeping, they're anxious all the time, you need things that are going to help you right now mm -hmm. um, to help you get to sleep, feel less anxious, feel less stressed, feel like you can, you know, actually function in this world. <clears throat> but over the long term, what you're looking to do is really try to support the system so you're making enough GABA yourself, so you don't need to take other forms of it to help supplement it in various ways. When it comes to you know, GABA supplementation, GABA supplements don't work typically mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. GABA is too big of a molecule to get through, get through the blood-brain barrier. Now, if you have a leaky gut, this usually means you have a leaky blood-brain barrier too, yeah. a leaky brain, yeah. as you know, Sarah. Mm -hmm. So as a result of that, if you're taking GABA supplements and they work, it often means that you have a leaky, it could mean that you have a leaky brain and a leaky gut. This is something you need to get checked out. In general, uh, you don't have a significant response to GABA supplements directly unless the GABA supplements are being used in different ways. So there's, um, so not GABA directly, but herbals 
potentially, or some things actually derived from mushrooms that can actually get across the blood brain barrier and help you increase your GABA production. So mm. you can do this in a couple of different ways. <clears throat> um, the first way is uh, you can use something um, that actually binds to the GABA receptor in the brain, but it's not actually GABA. And this is something that it gets, gets across the blood brain barrier. So in one of our products, for example, we have something called agarin, which is from the fly agaric mushroom. Uh, it, the fly agaric mushroom is known from Alice in Wonderland and from Santa Claus mythology because it's a psychedelic mushroom. The psychedelic part, though, is related to something called ibotenic acid in these mushrooms. Ibotenic acid is actually neurotoxic. Uh, that's why it oh. gives you hallucinations. But the other ingredient called agarin is something that enhances the GABA system by getting across the blood-brain barrier, attaching to the GABA receptor, increasing the GABA binding, and then increasing the function of GABA itself. And remember, GABA, the function of GABA is to prevent the firing of the neuron that it attaches to. So if you have two neurons together, one fires, the next one is called your postsynaptic neuron. That one is prevented from firing if you have GABA binding to its receptor, if it has GABA there to kind of hang out and, and prevent firing. So you have something like, this in, the, in this case, agarin, which gets across the blood-brain barrier, calms down the firing of the brain and does it for about eight hours on mm -hmm. from a half-life perspective. It's a very low dose. You have to use very low dose of it, but it works really well. And you also have other things that people have heard of before, like things like valerian root, mm -hmm. uh, hanakail, which comes from magnolia bark, kava, another one that is a very well-known plant that comes from the south specific that also binds to other sites on the GABA receptor to help with GABA binding itself. And then mm -hmm. as a result, you have more GABA um, that is, that, that's available. And then you have a prevention of the firing. So when you calm down the nervous system, you're able to calm down all of these things that might be happening as a result. And interestingly enough, there was just a new drug that was approved for postpartum depression. And this is FDA approved drug. <clears throat> the first drug that works on the GABA system specifically for depression. And it's it works immediately, which is un, unlike some of the other um, drugs yeah, that they're giving take people. Yeah, like three weeks or so, right? Yeah. Exactly, right? So SSRIs and things can take mm -hmm. up to eight weeks to work. Mm -hmm. And we now know that they really don't have an exact, yeah, they're not really working on depression per se, right? And we know that they're elevating mood I mean, right. it can be helpful for some people, but they have come with a lot of warnings and risks yeah. and, and everything oh, else. Yeah. So what's nice about um, using the GABA system is that this is your anxiety and stress system that for people listening. And if, if this system is not balanced, you are going to have more stress and anxiety. So mm -hmm. you can use these these uh, these herbals that I mentioned, along with agarin to help enhance the GABA system. Now, as you're doing this, you know, you want to be thinking, of course, by about supporting the whole system mm -hmm. so that you can actually make these conversions better and you can actually enhance your own internal GABA system. And then there's non-pharmacological ways of doing this too. Interesting. Yeah. So I'm not sure really where to go with that. I, I, yeah, I can, I can keep moving. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I think that I was, I just want to make sure that, you know, unless you had like burning questions, I don't like talking for too long before, before I keep going. So, <laughs> um, you know, I let, it's a conversation, everybody, yeah, you know, but yeah. at the same time, like, you know, when it comes down to looking at, uh, laboratory analysis is something that I, I would typically mm -hmm. do in, in my patients and clients is that I look at you know, what is your glutamine stores in the body? You can look at plasma amino acid levels, for example. Okay. You can see how much glutamine they have in their system. And if they're not, they don't have enough glutamine, then you have to support and give them glutamine as an amino acid, mm -hmm. as something that they're taking. I'm also looking at uh, levels of magnesium and vitamin B6, as I was mentioning before. Mm -hmm. If you If your levels are... If you're deficient in those kinds of things, you're not going to be able to make that conversion from glutamate to GABA as mentioned as well. So if you don't have that conversion, you're not going to make enough GABA and you're going to be GABA deficient. So I typically use, it's called met metabolomic testing. And mm -hmm. metabolomic testing is just a way of looking at cellular metabolism or the way your cells are really making various things, making energy typically, how well you're breaking down your your food, your protein, your carbohydrates, and your fats into its various components, their various components, going into the energy cycle called the Krebs cycle, the citric acid cycle in your mitochondria, and then how well you're making energy using all those, um, all those intermediates along the way of breaking down those macronutrients. And so when you're looking at that, you're looking at your 
micronutrients as well, your B vitamins, for example, you're looking at your minerals, you're looking for toxins. Mm -hmm. And of course, if you have significant toxin exposure, that's also going to affect the GABA system. Mm -hmm. And yeah, so you're, you're thinking about all these other things that might help the GABA system work better. And they work better, it, the system's going to work better if it has all the, the, uh, the ingredients that it's required to make these conversions happen. And then of course, you're looking at the, the gut as well. So if somebody has a leaky gut, and they're getting things into the system that are causing inflammation, causing stress, causing hormone imbalance. Um, you want to be addressing the gut as well by cleaning it up, uh, optimizing your commensal bacteria, the ones that are supposed to be there, trying to decrease things that might be overgrown or pathological. Um, and then of course, you know, it's not just about, you know, as, as you very well know, Sarah, it's not just about like looking at things in a silo, like just the gut or just right. the amino acid. Everything's just, connected. Yeah. And so everything that you're all about, like as far as resetting your circadian rhythms mm -hmm. and making sure that your gut bacteria are reset as well, because I don't know if people know this, but like your gut bacteria are also on circadian rhythms too. Exactly. Uh, yeah. I talk about that all the time. It's like, if you're going to try to do all this expensive gut testing and spend all this money on your probiotics and your circadian rhythms are trash, you're staying up all night on your phone or watching TV till midnight, you're guess what's not happening your gut is the gut lining is not turning over uh because right. your circadian rhythms are off and you're not getting that morning sunlight you're not getting the signal so i think that that gets left out of the conversation Always. any type of of conversation about the gut so yeah that's very foundational <laughs> yeah i always like to make people aware of that too in the sense mm -hmm. that we talk about like you know for example supplementing with vitamin B6 or supplementing mm -hmm. with magnesium or, or doing probiotics. But like, th these are just things that are important, but in a larger context, if you're not doing the other pieces of the larger ecosystem here, creating the ecosystem in your, in your avatar, in your meat suit that requires right. not just feeding your own cells, but feeding the trillions of bacteria, fungus, and virus that we have inside of us at all times. Right. And then especially thinking about circadian rhythms with all of this is, is super important. And that's, that's a big thing with sleep as well. And mm -hmm. the, the a major issue that many people have is that they can't sleep. They're either having a hard time falling asleep, they're having a hard, hard time asleep. staying asleep, mm -hmm. uh, or they're waking up, not feeling rested. Right. And a lot of this I've found actually is, I mean, there's so many th different things that are going on here. Of course, circadian rhythms and resetting as you are a great proponent of, and I'm a huge proponent of as, of as well is super important, but I do find that oftentimes GABA supplementation in the ways that we were describing. So improving their vitamins, minerals, and nutrients, and then using things like some of these herbals or fungals uh, that can really be supportive to the, the sleep architecture. Uh, the problem with a lot of sleep medications as, and sleep, uh, sleep drugs overall is that they trash your sleep architecture. So exactly. Have, like the benzodiazepines, don't yes. those like block uh slow wave sleep? Yeah, they block they block yeah. deep sleep. Exactly. Yeah. And yeah. so THC does yeah. the same. THC also blocks deep sleep. Oh, and so I didn't know that. Yeah. So it's really look, if you need to sleep, I mean, I, I get it. Like you just want to sleep. Mm -hmm. And breaking cycles can be really tough. But it's important if you can to try to stick with things that aren't going going to ruin or mess with your sleep architecture. Mm -hmm. So when we were creating our one of our newest products called TroZ, for example, we were looking at these various types of herbals and these GABA agonists, as they're called, so not GABA mm -hmm. directly, because again, GABA can't get across the, the blood-brain barrier, to help with sleep, but also improve or at least not affect sleep architecture in some mm -hmm. ways. So we also have a, a mushroom in the product called cordycepin. And cordycepin is, well, it's a mushroom, it's, it's actually from the cordyceps mushroom. Mm -hmm. And... Many people have heard the cordyceps mushroom over the last year or so if they've watched a show on HBO called The Last of Us, which is a zombie apocalypse movie where cordyceps wow. starts affecting, infecting humans and making them zombies. It does infect ants and insects and actually takes over their brain. So it's that's where they got the translation. The cordyceps mushrooms is actually famous for that. It becomes zombie, zombie brains of of ants actually. But okay. anyway, so we're, we're not using anything that's going to make you a zombie. It's, but we're using this cordycepin, which is the main active ingredient in the cordyceps mushroom. That's interesting because it actually seems to increase slow wave sleep. And this is what we've been seeing in some of our testing as we first come out with the product is that cordycepin seems to actually do this. And it's also being studied as something that's a, a 
potentially something that could be used for insulin resistance. It's uh, It's got metabolic activity and it's actually being used at high doses for potentially for oncologic reasons as well. It's, it's, it's super interesting, uh, this particular derivative. So, so trying to support sleep architecture with something like that, but also knowing that GABA is really important to maintain your sleep. So when you're on your REM cycle, when you're having your dream piece of your sleep, dreams can be very active for people. And mm-hmm. the problem with that is that, well, we don't want to act out our dreams, right? And one of the ways we don't act out our dreams is by having enough GABA around to prevent the release of some of your excitatory neurotransmitters like norepinephrine, dopamine, serotonin. Well, serotonin actually helps you maintain sleep. It's mostly mm-hmm. neur- norepinephrine that's going to wake you up if you're getting chased by a a monster or something mm-hmm. and you don't have the capacity to lucid dream and turn around and hug it or something. Yeah. So you know, one of my yeah. colleagues, doc, Dr. Ted, who in, in our company, he's a, I think, I think he said it's a stage three lucid dreamer. So oh. he can actually not only be aware of his dreams, but he actually can change his dreams and change the nature of things. So it's a, it's a pretty cool trick if, if you can. I've, inv- I've played around with that a long time ago and I can actually wake myself up from a bad dream now. It's taken me a long, yeah, it's taken me a long time to do that, but it takes me a while. I'm like, oh, you're having a bad dream. Wake up. Like I, I can do that, but I've done um, some interesting like long workshops with lucid dreaming. So it's it's pretty interesting stuff. But yeah, I haven't been able to like, change the trajectory of the dreams just yet yeah it was it's actually funny so i was talking to my daughter who's 11 uh, just a couple of days ago she's like dad I was, I was having a really scary dream and then i realized i was in a dream and then i started playing with the monster i'm like that's impressive wow <laughs> but let's <laughs> let's see if we can like cultivate this in you that's a yeah that's a good skill to have Absolutely. but it's rare it's rare and but yeah. if you're it, but it's something you can cultivate over time and get stronger over time if people are listening mm-hmm. there's lots of resources online oh, yeah. and various ways to do it but in, in essence, we don't want to wake up from our dream regardless, and we want to be able to stay asleep. And so having enough GABA around can really help you do that. So mm. the the formula has this agarin in it that helps you maintain your sleep. So the people that wake up in the middle of the night and then can't go back to bed, it's like your two or three o'clock mm-hmm. in the morning, wake up. And oftentimes this is a cortisol rise and you can do a lot, yes, as you it's know. It's the CAR is happening too early. Yeah. Yes. And yeah. As, as as you know, Sarah, you can really do a lot by resetting people's circadian rhythms here. Mm-hmm. Blue blockers uh, and, after sunset, te- get rid of the tech use that's and get the electronics out of the bedroom. A lot of that can help, but yes, I do yeah. occasionally have that odd person who is doing all that. I'm like, if you've done it for 90 days, then maybe we need to look at some other avenues and it doesn't happen right. often, but I do get people occasionally who are like, I'm doing everything you're saying, right? still waking up can't go back to sleep. But I'm like, yeah, your cortisol awakening response is happening too early, right? I hope you're enjoying today's episode with Dr. Scott. And I just wanted to remind you, if you do want to check out any of the products that he's talking about, you can use my code Sarah over at Transcriptions. There's a link down in the show notes for you. Very easy to access. And if you want to get the foundations for free of lifestyle and what you need to do to really get these sleep pieces in play, please check out my free resources on my website. It's www.sarahkleinerwellness.com. And then you'll just go to the tab that says all free resources. And then if you want to dive deeper from there, you can get a course to really understand how to implement these things deeper. But again, I have all these free eBooks. I've worked really, really hard to put out there for people who really want this information. So check that out. And again, if you want to get any of the things Dr. Scott talks about in the show, use code Sarah to save. Thank you again for listening and let's jump back into it. Yeah, have you, uh, well, a couple of things to think about. So first in, in that 90 day period, that's that's when you can use something like what we're describing here to help mm-hmm. people sleep while they're working on Getting, resetting all those yeah. circadian rhythms. So, yeah. and that's what I love about what you do and what, and really what I do too, is that, is that the idea is to use these things, even though it's a company that, that I'm a part of that, uh, that I work at as chief operating officer. The idea really is that, you know, I'm a clinician at heart and I would hope that most people don't need these things over the long term. Right. It's lifestyle. Yeah. Right. Or or that they just need them in a pinch. Like if they're traveling, for example, or if they're just getting in a bad rut and they just need something to break that cycle. Or they're going through a lot of stress. Like that's what I see a lot of. And that's my people that usually are having the major issue with the, the, the cortisol awakening responses. Like they're going through some serious life stress right? and I can't take that away from them with sunrise and blue blockers and, right. you know, cutting down the non-native EMF. I'm like, we have to wait for this stressful 
period in your life to pass, you know, do some trauma work, meditation, you know, all that stuff. But yes. yeah, that, I mean, that this might be something that could be helpful if someone is in that situation. Exactly. And that's how I typically will use it in clinical practice mm -hmm. is I use it in people that either we're want, we want help right now mm -hmm. while we're doing the, the harder work of optimizing, which can take for you 90 days. And for a lot of your clients, for me, can take longer in some mm -hmm. cases. Oh yeah. On, it takes longer for, yeah. it just, yeah. you know how it is. It, it depends oh, totally. on the health of the person when they begin doing the work. I mean, some people they're in moderately good health, but they have these lingering issues and then 30 days, they're great, you know, and yes. then you get the person who's had poor health for a really long time and they can't get out of things in 30 days. It's going to take a lot longer than that. So we, yeah. everybody has to look at these things with, from a perspective of what is your current level of health, you know, and how long have you been dealing with these issues? Yeah, no, absolutely. We often say it took you this many years to get to where right. you are. You can't expect that tomorrow you're going to feel better, but right. there are certain things. I mean, that's why the transcriptions company was even developed. So we have a a nonprofit company called Health Optimization Medicine and Practice, which is training doctors and practitioners on how to optimize health rather than treat disease. And we have a whole framework and educational platform, and we have cohorts of students that are going through it. And But it takes a while to optimize mm. people's health. I mean, for people's gut, it can take sometimes a year or longer to really see yeah. a huge shift. And, yeah. and so what are you going to do right now to help these people uh, along with the lifestyle measures, along with exactly. the dietary changes? And so that's where our products, even our methylene blue products that we talked about in our last product po podcast are really, really great because they can support the system now yeah. while you're doing the the more challenging, longer term work of yeah. really shifting their, their cellular biology. Yeah. And I mean, uh, just to talk about the methylene blue, that's been saving my life. I've, you know, off camera was telling you I've had some stress going on in my life with my kids and the yeah. sleep has been a big issue here. And, uh, you know, if, when I don't get my sleep methylene blue, and then I actually use my, uh, I have a V light, um, helmet, Excellent. put up my nose, like wait about 15 minutes after I take the methylene blue, put the helmet on and I can actually hold conversations and be somewhat smart that day. Uh, right. but that methylene blue is a lifesaver for that. And now that's not something that I think people should be doing every day, but you know, again, you have these periods of chronic stress or things going on in your life. And, and sometimes these things can be super, super helpful, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Well said. I think that it's called threshold. This is something that my right. father's a chiropractor and I think it's his favorite word is threshold. Mm. And he always talks about this, you know, in kids that, have neurodevelop neurodevelopmental issues, for example, um, when they be, you know, there's lots of different sort of, there's lots of different examples of reaching a threshold and then sort mm -hmm. of really having a hard time coming mm -hmm. back off from that cliff. And so my father's a right. chiropractor in, in New York and he's been a chiropractor for 40 years and he's seen kids with autistic on the spectrum. He's seen, you know, neurodevelopment, I can't say that word today, neurodevelopment, developmental issues in, in kids and yeah. adults. Um, and, everything across the board and especially in the post COVID world, as we are mm. now, oh, like gosh, so many people yeah. with just the stress and the, the uh, dysregulation of their yes. system, especially their balance between their sympathetic and parasympathetic yeah, nervous that's system. That's huge yeah. right now. It's really, yeah. really, really huge is that people are more and more these days, just stuck in sympathetic, like, and they, they are yes. having the hardest time getting out. I mean, when my friend, um, Irene Lyon, she's a really dear friend of mine. She's been on the podcast multiple times and mm. she has a course about trauma. She's got a 21 day and a 12 week. And uh, that <laughs> course does really, really, really well. Anytime I bring her on, she gets a lot of new people that take that course because uh, people are stuck. You know, they're really stuck and they're desperate to get out and they know they're stuck, you know? Right. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's, and it's, it's a big issue. I mean, the sympathetic yeah. dominance of what happens when we're so sympathetically dominant that the, I mean, I talk about this all the time in various ways, but we all, all had the experience of our mind just going completely blank. We can't yeah. remember what we yeah. want to say or what, what we were just thinking it's about. It's like severe brain fog. And that's yeah. what, yeah, that's what happens to me when I can't, when I don't get my sleep is like, right. my husband will ask me a question. I'm like, I don't know. And he's like, yeah. you do know. I'm like, right now, I don't know. And I can't complete this task <laughs> because yeah, yeah. it's just not available to me. So, yeah. So, yeah. yeah and, and so I think methylene blue is a great supportive because it's really exactly. helping mitochondria work better. And at the same time, it's really important to think about how you can sort of 
go back or take some steps off of that cliff. Mm -hmm. And one of the ways you can do that pretty acutely is by looking at the GABA system. So we have another product called Trocom, for example. Uh, Trocom has something called nicotinyl GABA in it, which is a vitamin B3 attached to a GABA. And when that's the case, it goes across the blood-brain barrier pretty easily because the B3 is there. As we were talking about, GABA supplements in general don't work, but a vitamin B3 attached will let it go through. And then when it gets in the brain, it actually hydrolyzes or breaks apart into vitamin B3 and GABA. So increases GABA in the system, as we've been talking about, really important for calming down the firing of your system, balancing out that glutamate GABA ratio. But vitamin B3 is really important for energy production and vasodilation. So it dilates blood vessels a little bit. So instead of making you tired, especially mm -hmm. at the low doses, it actually just makes you not anxious and makes mm -hmm. you not stressed. And so it's interesting. And people that use Trocom, if you're not anxious or stressed, you may not feel a huge amount different. You might feel like your mind is a little bit more quiet, but if you're feeling ang anxious and stressed, you're going to feel like that anxious and stress you know, is significantly improved. And you can like just take a quarter of the trochee. And that really just for, for me, for example, that really does a nice job just taking the edge off just a little bit. So my brain starts mm -hmm. you know, being more parasympathetic all of a sudden, and then I start being able to think again. Now, of course, you can also... Mm -hmm. There's lots of things you can do from a non-pharmacological -pharma perspective. And these are all things that you work on, Sarah, and I do too. But one of the main ones that actually been shown in studies is that meditation, breath work, and yoga all increase GABA in your brain. And this wouldn't be surprising to anybody listening. Uh, and it doesn't mean that you have to meditate for like three hours a day or something like that. It just, even if you take 30 seconds to a minute and just take some slow exhale breaths, that's going to calm down your nervous system. Mm -hmm. And so there's various small ways that you can kind of bring this into your into your daily life. But in a pinch, something like Trocom can be great because it can help take that edge off pretty quickly mm -hmm. if you're having a stressful moment. And, and I was just talking to my father the other day because we do a lot of work. We collaborate a lot on, on post-COVID people, for example. And I, mm -hmm. my other work is in, in hyperbaric oxygen therapy, as you know. Mm -hmm. And so uh, we do a lot of work in the post-COVID world trying to optimize mitochondrial function. Something like you know, methylene blue is something we use a lot. We use hyperbaric oxygen therapy, but we're also using a lot of things to try to rebalance the sympathetic, parasympathetic, uh, the, the, the imbalance that's happening there. And, and using something like a GABA, uh, something that works in the GABA system. So it has, the Trocom has nicotinyl GABA. It has kava in it, which we talked about earlier, and it has CBD and CBG. And CBD and CBG are non-psychoactive cannabinoids that mm -hmm. work on the the endocannabinoid system, which is kind of our body's balancing system. It's like our homeostatic system. Mm -hmm. And they also work on the GABA system as well in various ways to to also balance the GABA system at the same time, which is pretty cool. That is very cool. Yeah. So trocalm would be more like if you just kind of need to chill, right? Yes, yes. And then you've got TroZ, which is the one you were talking about for people that are like having this early uh, cortisol awakening response or just right. just the sleep issue, right? Yeah, having a hard time maintaining sleep. Maintaining the, the, sleep. But with trocalm as well, if you're somebody like me who has a hard time shutting their brain off before At you go night, to bed. Yeah, just... Yeah. Yeah. So Trocom doesn't necessarily make you feel tired, although it can if you increase the dose in some people. Mm -hmm. For me, what it does, it just quiets your mind. And it mm -hmm. does this for a lot of my patients as well. So if you don't have a hard time maintaining sleep, but just have a hard time falling asleep, sometimes mm -hmm. Trocom can really be helpful there. Mm -hmm. When it comes to TroZ, this is something that has sort of your complete sleep solution inside of it. So it helps mm -hmm. you with induction. So it helps you fall asleep. It makes okay. you feel a little sleepy. It helps you maintain sleep. And then it helps you feeling like you're rested when you wake up. It has it has eight different ingredients in it. I've spoken about a couple of them already. One of them is called agarin. This is the, the mushroom okay. derivative from the psychedelic mushroom, but does not make you feel psychedelic at all. It's okay. very, very low. So dose. no one's going to trip off this. No, we actually have a limit <laughs> on how many you can buy at a time. Oh, for this, okay. For this reason, yeah. For that, re oh wow. Okay. Yeah. Well, and and also, so I mean, no stockpiling. Anybody listening? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if you're a practitioner and you're listening though, and you're having, you want to have it in your yes. office. Yeah. You don't have any limits to how much you can carry in your office okay. if you're a practitioner, okay. because you know, practitioners can regulate a little bit more than sure. than, than the uh, than clients can or than consumers maybe can on their own mm -hmm. without having an understanding of maybe what you know the ramifications would be but anyway so so we have this this one ingredient agar and we have another one hanakyle which is from magnolia bark it helps with increasing gaba in the system we have cbd and cbn uh, non psychoactive cannabinoids cbd everybody knows cbn is another non psychoactive that's also mm -hmm. been shown to improve sleep 
We have, uh, what else do we have in there? We have uh, a little bit of melatonin and 5-HTP. So I know there's some controversy on melatonin and whether we should be taking it or not. Uh, what's your stance on melatonin? Sarah? It's just... changed. Yeah. I mean, I did an episode with my partner, Carrie Bennett on, I have another podcast called Quantum Conversations. Cool. Uh, and we did a whole episode on melatonin. We both kind of dove into some of Russell Ryder's research, which is super fascinating. Mm. And uh yeah, I mean, I think a lot of the research has been done on people who ha don't have intact circadian rhythms. Right. And I think that's missing from the conversation completely around some of this research. But, um, you know, there there are people that say melatonin um, thins the retina. Then you look at that study and it was done on albino mice. And so <laughs> I'm starting to think melatonin is not as evil as a lot of people in the quantum and circadian world make it out to be, but I'm still going to have somebody really dial in their circadian work before they use melatonin. And if it's, it's someone with cancer um, or COVID or a really severe illness, I think some temporary melatonin supplementation can actually like a small amount of sustained right. release can actually be super helpful um, right. in those situations. So I've definitely changed my stance on melatonin a bit. Um, I still don't think it should be supplemented in children. Uh, yeah. I think that's yeah. a could be a dangerous thing because it's a hormone. But uh, yeah, I'm 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 a little no, more open to it than I used to be. <laughs> yeah, no, I love that because I mean there is some controversy around it, and yeah. we do have it in this formula. And I think the way that I like to to frame it is in the way you described it. It's really for helping people reset and mm -hmm. helping them in in these processes when they're looking at resetting their circadian rhythms and resetting mm -hmm. everything else. I mean, mm -hmm. we do know that melatonin production does go down pretty dramatically. I think at the, That's around the at the age of, what, what age is it in your? Uh, I thought it was like, yeah, I was going to say 50 is what I, I what I had read in, in writer's research. Yeah. Yeah. So that's what I thought. So around 50, our melatonin production does drop pretty dramatically. And it so does. I do think there's probably a role in, 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 in maybe in that age group and, and above, at least to have some sort of baseline. So melatonin support. Yeah, you know. definitely. But I will Even say, the, yeah. I will say that yeah. the majority of the people that do my courses, um, for whatever reason, I attract a lot of baby boomers. Um, okay. and a lot of the, the late, the people that do my courses are women. I get forties, but I also get a ton of 50, 60s and even women in their seventies mm -hmm. and the women in their seventies after doing, uh, my 21 day reset, sleeping through the night for the first time in 20 years. I mean, I That's get amazing. that. I get that email and that message a lot. Um, so awesome. I do think that there is something, like I said, let's Carrie and I kind of broke apart in that episode about this 50 and older melatonin going down, try them on, you know, are they getting out for UVA light? Right. And, and so they're, you know, having serotonin that gets converted into pineal melatonin that night. Are they getting out in the day and getting near infrared on the skin? So they're making that subcellular melatonin. Are they doing that? Most people are not in the same age. So I always want to throw that caveat in there. But yeah. again, to your point, um, helpful for a reset, you know, right. uh, and exactly. I don't think that it's as evil as you know, some of the people in the quantum circadian world are making it out to be unless you're abusing it and relying on it every night and you're not doing all these other things, right? Right. And I think that's great. And, and that, that's why I love the nuance of the conversation because mm -hmm. I think absolutely not everything is for everybody. And we, but right. with, as far as these supplements and these kinds of formulas, and, and I think Trozy is one of those that is going to be something that if you're doing all the right things, if you're doing the, your course, you're not going to need this over the long term. That's for sure. Right. Only in a pinch, only when you really right. need to. But if you need to sleep now, because you're right. not having any, having a hard time, you know, or you can go over to Trocom, which is great because it's not going to be potentially sedating, but you can mm -hmm. use it during the day to reset your nervous system and help quiet your mind before bed if you're worried about things like melatonin. We also, in Trozy, we have 5-HTP in there as well mm. to support serotonin and you know, serotonin helps with with helping maintain sleep as well. Yes. Now, as you as you know. So, mm -hmm. and then then there's the final ingredient I, I did I did already discuss was called cordycepin, which is from the cordyceps mushroom. So it's a pretty complete sleep solution. And it's nice because if you have enough GABA around and you do wake up in the middle of the night during your dreams or from a mm -hmm. cortisol spike, you, if you have more GABA around, it's going to mitigate that as well. So oftentimes people will be able to go back to bed as yep. opposed to having to be awake at three o'clock. Awake for the night, rest of the night, which I, the I, that happens quite a bit for people. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but all in the context that I really do 100% agree with you that 
the way I always like to think about these things, and we hope that our clients will, is that these are tools that we can use mm -hmm. when you need them, when you're under, under a lot of stress, when you're having a freight train of poor sleep that you just can't yep. break or stress yep. you can't break, or you're really working on your mitochondrial function from a, mito from a methylene blue perspective, but you have a long way to go and you have mm -hmm. dysfunctional complexes and you're out in the sunlight, but even all, even you're doing all that, you're, you're still having a hard time. Mm -hmm. These are things that can really help you along the way. But the hope is that over time that you need them less and yeah. that you just need them when you need them. And like, for example, I have people now that I initially had on methylene blue daily for, for months initially when they were first super sick with some post viral kinds of things. And now I have them on twice a week and mm. they're doing great. And adding on things like red light, of course, is great. Yep. But doing the the lifestyle, the diet, the the for for me, the testing and the 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 framework that I use is just so super helpful over the long term. But we have to get them there. And we all need small wins along the way. And a good night's sleep is is certainly one of them. So a hundred percent. Yeah. 100%. Well, is there anyone who might be, I always like to ask this question, these yeah. products are contraindicated for? So if you're taking prescribed sleep aids, you don't want to combine them with mm. any other sleep aids really, because that's just kind of dangerous. It can mm. be dangerous. If you're drinking alcohol, you don't want to combine anything that has GABA as a supplement or that increases GABA in your, in your brain with, with alcohol, because alcohol, benzodiazepines, I have a very, very high affinity for the GABA receptor, so high that this is why they cause withdrawal and tolerance. And if you stop taking them abruptly, if you've been on them for a long period of time, it can kill you because the mm. brain does not like uh, an immediate uh, deficiency of something that's enhancing the GABA system so okay. strongly uh, because it remodels your receptors and it makes them at high risk. So you got to be careful if you're taking GABAergic supplements uh, or drugs. So just be okay. aware of that uh, before combining any other GABA supplements or uh, or things that we're talking about here. Uh, so if someone's GABA taking like benzodiazepines, don't take the Trozy, correct? I wouldn't recommend doing it unless you're doing it in... Uh, very close supervision by your practitioner. So sometimes mm -hmm. what, what I will do as a clinician is that if somebody comes on or come that, that, that that's on these drugs is coming to me, then we'll slowly wean them off mm -hmm. of those drugs along with adding something on that's supporting the GABA system. Okay. But it just has to be done under close supervision because it. combining these things can cause respiratory depression. It's very uh -huh. unusual, but okay. you worry about- happen. Yeah, you worry about that. So, so you worry Got about it. people that are on- uh, these kinds of GABA drugs already. And then you also, I mean, there's just not a lot of data on yeah, for pregnant or breastfeeding women. Oh, yeah. We've talked about yeah. this already with, mm -hmm. with methylene blue, the same mm -hmm. kind of deal. Although I know you were, uh, I think supplementing while you were breastfeeding, which is yep. totally fine. And I think th there's just not a lot of research. We just don't know, for example. Yeah. Right? Babies talking and doing everything like ahead of time, you know, so it's perfect. <laughs> he's, yeah. You're he's doing well rock and roll with some methylene blue. I love it. So yeah. we know methylene blue is very safe in almost everybody other than pregnant or breastfeeding women. Uh, and when it comes to the supplements that have GABA, you just have to think about pregnant and breastfeeding women again. And then those that are yeah. on GABA supplements or GABA drugs or uh, some of these other GABA herbals. So just combining things is just something you always have to take slow. And if, if it's, if it's being done with prescribed medications, always under close supervision is what, what I would highly recommend in the end. That's contraindications. Um, anything else you want to add to the conversation at all? No, I think we had a pretty good overview of, of GABA, the system, why it's so important. I guess maybe the only thing I should mention that I didn't mention is that where GABA is located in the brain is everywhere. And it actually <laughs> ah. helps regulate the flow of all these neurotransmitters that everybody knows and loves and hates like dopamine and serotonin. Mm. It's something called an interneuron. So it actually goes between these neurons. So it's trying to help you regulate the firing of these neurons. So when you're going through a crazy dopamine hit, like scrolling through your phone, for example, mm. what GABA is trying to do is regulate all that information that you're able to process and trying to slow it all down, but having a very difficult time and then getting depleted as well. So when you're, when you're using your dopamine systems all the time, for example, you're also going to do to be uh, also depleting your GABA system as well. So remember everything's interrelated, but the, these GABA interneurons are really there to help, to help you with learning, with memory, with processing. And so if you're deficient in GABA, 
you're going to have a hard time with learning. You're going to have a hard time with memory, mm. you're going to have a hard time with processing. And that if you're always clocking your dopaminergic neurons, for example, you're going to deplete it along with the other mm. reasons why we said you're going to deplete it already. If you're overstressed, if you're, if you're nutrient deficient, if your gut's toxic. So just another context here, why it's so important to be thinking about GABA along with yep. those other sexy neurotransmitters that everybody knows. Loves and hates kinds of things. Yeah, but, exactly. But thank you, Sarah. This is this has yeah. been fun. Thank you. Yeah, it's been me. a lot of fun. And I will make sure I link everything in the show notes for people if they want to take a look at these products. And um we use them here. I think they're fantastic. And yeah, it's been fun. We'll definitely have to uh have another conversation again sometime in the future. Yeah, always more stuff coming. Uh, but we're always looking at how we can truly help people now along the the the, the long path to health optimization, which is more easy or easier because of people like you in the world, Sarah. So thank you for what you do too. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed today's episode with Dr. Scott. Again, quick reminder, if you want to check out any of the products that Dr. Scott talked about, you can use the code Sarah over on the Troscriptions website. That link will be in the show notes for you. And always head to my website for free resources, www.sarahkleinerwellness.com. And if you did enjoy the show, please take a moment to head on over to Apple or Spotify. Give the show up to a five-star review. I know it sounds silly and a lot of podcast hosts ask you to do that, but it really does help to get the show out to more people and just spread this message of health and wellness to as many people that need to hear it. Thanks again to Viva Rays, my go-to source for circadian glasses, code Yogi there, and upgraded formulas, code Yogi12 or Yogi if you've used that one before, my go-to source for minerals. And I really appreciate both of them for sponsoring today's show so that we continue to get this message out to many people. Thanks again for listening, and I will talk with you again soon.